is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It's 5 o'clock here on your Tuesday. Good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. Here's what's making headlines on this July 28th. Homelessness in downtown Indianapolis, a growing concern as the pandemic continues to hurt jobs and the economy. How the city says it's working to offer housing and health resources for those in need. New cases of COVID-19 are not showing any signs of slowing here in Indiana. We talked to experts about if the statewide mask mandate will be enough to get the numbers going in the right direction. And an Indianapolis man says he's tested positive for more than a month after his diagnosis. We'll take a look at the reason why and if you can be reinfected after already having the coronavirus. But first, we do want to get a check of your Storm Team 6 forecast on our Tuesday. We had a lot of storms that moved through in the late afternoon hours yesterday. Todd, what can we expect as we start a brand new work day? You know, Lauren, it's much more quiet day for us today across the area. In fact, it's going to turn into a terrific day for us uh, later on this afternoon. This morning, as you take a look from downtown off to the west, you can see a little bit in the way of cloud cover. There's a little bit of patchy fog out there as well, especially in northern locations where the skies have already cleared. Lafayette down to three tenths of a mile, only a tenth of a mile visibility in Frankfurt. Gas City right at that one mile visibility in Fairmount at about one mile as well. As the skies continue to clear, I'm expecting some fog to settle into the metro area and points to the south as well this morning. I don't know how dense it's going to be. Uh, probably generally right around a mile visibility, so it'll be reduced, but it's only going to be short-lived because soon as this front continues to move off to the south and takes the clouds with it, when the sun comes up, it'll burn any fog that is out there off very, very quickly, and it turns into a terrific day as the humidity is going to drop throughout the course of the day. We're in the 60s right now to the north, 70s down to the south throughout the day today. Sunny skies from start to finish with high temperatures eventually, Lauren, with low humidity topping off right around 86 degrees. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look back up on the northwest side. This is where we're monitoring a crash cleanup in the southbound right lane. You can see a wrecker now at the scene here of this crash cleanup. Traffic is still getting by just fine in the other lane, so it shouldn't slow down your commute too much. Just move over and give them plenty of room to work there in that right southbound lane. New from overnight, police Police are investigating a shooting outside of the Marathon gas station on Indy's northwest side. Police tell RTV6 that a man arrived at the hospital with multiple gunshot wounds in the chest and abdomen around 10 last night. He is listed in critical condition. Police say the shooting happened outside of the gas station near the Lafayette Road and Tibbs Avenue intersection. The victim was taken to a, was driven to the hospital rather by another person and the shooter fled in the car. Police have not released any other information about a suspect at this time. Less activity downtown due to COVID-19 concerns is highlighting a growing problem here in our community, homelessness. Our Alyssa Donovan is joining us live this morning from Monument Circle. Alyssa, the city is working to address this issue right now. That's right, Lauren. The city announced yesterday a plan to help the homeless people in our community by providing housing and health services in the future. And as you may have noticed, as you've driven around the downtown area, the pandemic has created a bit of a gap in services for Indy's homeless residents. It's led to temporary closures of shelters like the Rubin Engagement Center, where social distancing isn't possible. Homeless neighbors are not new to downtown, but a decrease in activity because of the pandemic is highlighting the number of people who have nowhere else to go but the street. Members of the Alliance for Homeless Transformation fear the past five months have been only the beginning of a massive problem. Right now, we have 15,000 homeless in Indianapolis. Once the moratorium on evictions comes, you will probably see 60 to 70,000 homeless in Indianapolis because individuals are out of work and then have no um, way to pay their rent because they didn't have the funds before. Part of the city's plan to address homelessness in the community includes partnering with the Rubin Engagement Center, the shelter also known as the REC. And together they'll be working with other local organizations to provide alternative housing in hotel rooms for those who are homeless here in Indianapolis. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6.
Alyssa, thank you. It is 5.04 and Indiana has reached nearly 63,000 cases of COVID-19 since the pandemic began. Let's take a look at the latest numbers. The Indiana State Department of Health is reporting 561 new cases of the virus. That's down from the 8 and 900 counts we saw over the weekend. They also confirmed three new deaths, bringing the death toll in our state to 2009 more than... Uh, 2009, more than 707,000 Hoosiers have been tested for the virus so far, and about 9% of those tests have come back positive. We are now in day two of face coverings being required in public places statewide. Marion County has shut down bars and is limiting capacity in other places as well. So are these measures enough to once again slow the spread of COVID-19? Our own Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with what experts are saying. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So as you just said, about 9% of Hoosiers who have been tested since the beginning of the pandemic have tested positive. And now that daily rate, it keeps increasing. And that is why the governor put in this mask up mandate. Dr. Sean Granis with the Regents Treef Institute tells us we should know if that new mask mandate is working in the next two weeks. He also says evidence and studies continue to show that face masks and social distancing cut down on community spread. He believes if people follow the guidelines, we can get back to some sense of normalcy quicker. During uh, the first phase in March and April and May, we showed that Hoosiers know how to slow down the spread of coronavirus. And I think we are uh, ready and we are prepared and we are armed with great information to be able to slow this spread. The Regents Treef Institute has a COVID-19 dashboard where they compile data from across the state. It breaks the information down by county. That way you know exactly how coronavirus is impacting your community. Now the governor signed that executive order for the mask up mandate through August 27th. So that is how long, how long we'll have to see if this mask up mandate works. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. An Indianapolis COVID-19 survivor is telling RTV6 that he kept testing positive long after his symptoms stopped. Ronald Smith says that he was diagnosed with the virus back in June, but long after his symptoms were gone, he kept testing positive. He says he was finally cleared on Friday, 44 days after his initial diagnosis. We brought the concern to experts who say it's possible to test positive after recovery. Patients can remain positive for weeks following um, the infection. And in fact, there's the Korean CDC report that patients were positive up to 80 days. Experts say once people are no longer showing symptoms like a fever, the person is no longer contagious, even if the virus shows up in a test. The CDC recommends those infected quarantine for 10 days after symptoms are gone. The agency also says there are seven different strains of the virus, so it's still unclear whether or not reinfection is a possibility. The University of Notre Dame is pulling out from hosting the first presidential debate. Officials say they made the decision because of coronavirus concerns. It was scheduled for September 29th at the South Bend campus. In a statement, Notre Dame's president says that health precautions needed ahead of the debate would greatly diminish the educational value of hosting it. The debate will be moved instead to Western Reserve University in Cleveland. COVID-19 resurgence has prompted a big change for DePaul University. The private college says that it will only have first and second year students on the Greencastle campus this fall. New transfers and international students will also have the option to be on campus. That will be about 2,000 students. DePaul says they hope to bring juniors and seniors back for the spring semester. Classes are set to begin on August 31st. And as part of RTV6's Safely Back to School initiative, we want to tell you about a back to school town hall brought to you by our partners at Radio One. You'll hear from local leaders in education and health care and get important information and best practices to keep your kids safe. The Radio One back to school town hall is set for Thursday, July 30th from 1 to 3 p.m. You can listen live on Hot 96.3, AM 1310, The Light, 106.7 WTLC, and also on the RTV6 Facebook page. It's 5.09. Let's get a check of our forecast for our Tuesday with Todd Claussen.
And Lauren, it is a good forecast for us. Just have to get through a couple of what we'll call iffier hours here this morning, and that's due to a little bit of patchy fog that is starting to settle in, and there's still a little bit of humidity out there as well. Visibility down to a quarter mile in Lafayette. It's not too much of an issue in Indianapolis as of yet, but I am expecting those visibilities to drop at least a little bit from Indianapolis southward as the skies continue to clear this morning. So as you get going, we'll burn off the fog if you even see it in your neighborhood very quickly. Once the sun comes up. Temperatures this morning are in the 60s and 70s, and then throughout the day, the humidity will drop. There are those clouds that you see are departing the area. A few spotty showers still on the far eastern portion of the state, but the overall trend will be for the clear skies to the north near Chicago and in Michigan to build in as we go throughout the course of the day. So get out there and enjoy temperatures in the 80s all across the area with mostly sunny skies and that low humidity. Tomorrow's another decent day before things get unsettled, we'll talk about the extended forecast for you coming up in just a few minutes. Lauren. Todd, thank you. Hundreds honored the late Congressman John Lewis as he was taken to the Capitol. Coming up, the touching tributes and why President Trump says he will not visit the memorial. And the pandemic continues to cause difficulties in professional sports. Still ahead, a big announcement from the NFL and how the MLB is dealing with an outbreak. And let's take a look on the northwest side where the crash has cleared in the southbound right lane of I-65 here, a little south of 38th Street. So that is great news for your commute. Everything is traveling up to speed, both northbound and southbound. Stick around. More news, weather, and traffic coming up on Good Morning Indiana. Overnight crowds of people continue to pay their respects to late congressman and civil rights leader John Lewis at the Capitol. He was given a touching farewell of some of Washington's most iconic landmarks. The Martin Luther King Memorial, the National Museum of African American History, and Black Lives Matter Plaza where he made one of his last public appearances. His body was then taken to the rotunda where he lay in state and on a reserve for the country's most prominent leaders. Vice President Mike Pence and Second Lady Karen Pence paid their respects along with presidential candidate Joe Biden. Lewis's body will be taken outside of the Capitol today so that more people can pay their respects while still staying safe during the coronavirus pandemic. And one person who says they won't be visiting is President Donald Trump. The president told reporters yesterday he will not go to the memorial. Those two had a contentious relationship. Lewis skipped Trump's inauguration and each of his State of the Union addresses except this year's. Congress is racing to agree and pass a new coronavirus relief bill before a month-long recess in August. Republicans unveiled details of their plan, the HEALS Act. It stands for Health, Economic Assistance, Liability Protection, and Schools. It includes includes another round of stimulus checks. It reduces the enhanced unemployment benefits to $200 and it allocates billions for testing and reopening schools. The bill is expected to evolve quite a bit in the next few days as Republicans and Democrats craft a final bill they can all agree on and that gets the White House's approval. More signs that the coronavirus pandemic is altering your upcoming holiday shopping plans. Target announcing that it will close on Thanksgiving Day. That retailer said in a blog post, quote, historically deal hunting and holiday shopping can mean crowded events and this isn't a year for crowds, end quote. Instead, Target says its holiday shopping deals will begin in October. Walmart announced that last week that it will also be closed on Thanksgiving. They said its workers really stepped up this year and they should enjoy the holiday with their loved ones. Dick Sporting Goods says it's following major retailers' footsteps and also closing on Thanksgiving. Dick Sporting Goods will continue to give its employees a 15% pay bump through the end of the year. But the show must go on for the Emmys. The award nominations will be announced today. The Television Academy is planning a virtual award show hosted by comedian Jimmy Kimmel. The BET Awards and Daytime Emmys managed to still hold similar virtual events last month. The Emmy Awards will air right here on RTV6 on September 20th. It is 516 on your Tuesday. Let's check in with Todd Clausen on today's forecast. Hey, Todd. Lauren, good morning to you. A little bit of cloud cover this morning still. Still a little bit of humidity as well, and we're dealing with some reduced visibility now across parts of the area. But overall, it is going to turn into a terrific day. 
been watching this tower camera shot and just a few minutes ago if you were joining us uh, you could see off in the distance we just had a little bit of cloud cover but you can see now uh, the camera kind of encompassed in clouds a little bit there so as we go throughout the day and we're going to see these visibilities drop a little bit I think over the course of the next hour or so and we're down to a quarter mile visibility in Lafayette and some of that more dense fog continues to form across parts of uh, Clinton County as well as you work your way into the Frankfurt area. And the reason why we're dealing with the fog to the north is that's where the skies have cleared already and that's where the temperatures are a little bit cooler. So as the skies continue to clear from Indianapolis southward and those temperatures drop into the 60s, it's not out of the question we could start to see this fog develop a little bit more across parts of the metro area, at least compared to where it is right now. Uh, 73 degrees currently in a balloon. Bloomington and temperatures today will eventually climb up into the mid 80s. It turns into an absolutely terrific afternoon for us all across the area because the humidity that is going to drop as well. So you see the clear skies here to the north. That's where the fog is starting to settle in. The clouds that are still present from Indianapolis to the south, they will be moving out as this cold front continues to push off to the south and east. This is a big, long cold front. It goes all the way from New England back into southern Missouri, and we're dealing with the winds behind it coming out of a west-northwesterly direction. So while this front didn't really drop the temperatures a whole lot, yesterday we were able to sneak up to 91 degrees for your high. We'll be around 86 today, but the big difference, again, is going to be the humidity as that is going to come way, way down as the morning progresses. And by this afternoon, uh, humidity is going to be a thing of the past, and we're just going to enjoy lots of sunshine, as you see here on TrueCast. As far as the humidity goes, there it is, dropping down to dew points right around 60 degrees by 5 p.m. That is absolutely terrific. If you're in the 60s or low 60s, you're in pretty good shape. 70s and mid-70s where we were yesterday, and then you're not in such good shape uh, as you could tell when you walked out the door to start your Monday. Tomorrow's another good day for us. The humidity remains fairly low, plenty of sunshine, slightly warmer tomorrow as high temperatures climb back into the mid to upper 80s. And enjoy today and tomorrow because once we get to Thursday and then through the weekend, we'll be dealing with some scattered showers and storms. No day is a complete washout, but there will be unsettled weather across the area. So you, know, you don't have to worry about the rain today and tomorrow. So take advantage, try to get outside and do something here across the area. Lauren. All right, Todd, we're trying to find some fog that you mentioned. And this is a look at, you can see a little bit off in the distance, I-65, a look here near the Lebanon Rest area. So just keep that in mind, especially as you're traveling in those far northwesterly locations. Looks like traffic in this area is still traveling up to speed, though, both northbound and southbound. No crashes or delays here to slow down your morning drive. As training camps for all 32 NFL teams get underway this week, the league just announced they'll, there will be no preseason games this year. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell says the pandemic has changed how the 2020 football season is being handled. In addition to the cancellations, players and coaches will begin to be tested for the virus every day. The Colts will now hold their first home game in two weeks against the Minnesota Vikings that's set for September 20th. Players in the NFL face costly penalties if they catch the coronavirus away from their team facilities. An agreement between the league and the players states that a player engaging in high-risk activity away from the team could be fined or risk not being paid. The memo defines some of the high-risk activities as attending indoor parties, bars, nightclubs, or concerts where there are more than 15 people. This allows teams to challenge a player's COVID-19 diagnosis as a football injury. A successful challenge would allow teams to possibly place a player on the non-injury list with the option of not paying them. In baseball news, Major League Baseball is postponing three games after a number of Miami Marlins tested positive for COVID-19. Two of last night's games, the Marlins home opener against the Baltimore Orioles and the Yankees-Phillies game were both canceled. According to ESPN, 11 Marlins players and two coaches were infected. They had just played the Phillies the series before. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred said that the Marlins will also be postponing their game today. He said they're conducting additional testing, and if test results are acceptable, the team can resume play against the Orioles on Wednesday. The pandemic has caused the nation to enter a coin shortage, but a Virginia Chick-fil-A is stepping up to collect customers' spare change. Their offer for free food just after the break.
Welcome back. It is 524 on your Tuesday. Here's a look at I-70 near Rural Street and Keystone Avenue on the near east side. You can see traffic heading in and out of the downtown area here is traveling up to speed. Some clouds there in the city skyline off in a distance. We'll continue to keep a close eye on your commute this morning. We'll keep you updated on any issues. So the pandemic has caused a shortage in coins and to encourage you to help out, Chick-fil-A in Virginia is offering some free meals. This week, they're going to give customers $10 in cash and a free entree voucher if you can round up $10 in change. The special is only available for certain hours, but the Lynchburg Restaurant's Facebook page says it will continue the deal until it gets all the coins that it needs. The vouchers are limited to 10 per customer. Oh man, Todd, now I'm hungry for Chick-fil-A breakfast. They always do this around <laughs> this time of the morning, don't they? Uh, yeah, it's good any time of the day. You know us on our schedule. I mean, breakfast is basically uh, early in the morning, and then once we get to about this time and we're looking ahead to the 7 o'clock hour, we're ready for lunch. So I'm all right outside right now. We're dealing with... Some clouds moving through central Indiana, but they're on their way out of the area. That is the good news. Been watching this tower cam and the visibilities have been fluctuating a little bit. You can see some of the lights blinking there on top of the One America building through the cloud cover. Uh, if you're seeing some fog, if you're seeing some cloud cover this morning, do not worry. We are going to be dealing with sunny skies by about 9 a.m. We're in the process of moving these clouds out. Temperature is going to hold pretty steady here throughout the morning hours while these clouds are in place. Uh, but by this afternoon, we are looking at mostly sunny skies and high temperatures that will eventually be topping off in uh, the mid 80s. It turns into an absolutely terrific Tuesday for us. Just got to be patient here, Lauren, for the next couple hours. Todd, thank you. What happens if you're forced to stay home with a sick child or what if your school shuts down because of a coronavirus outbreak? Just ahead on Good Morning Indiana, we're taking a closer look at what rights you have in the workplace as your child returns to school. It is 527. Here we'll be right back with more on Good Morning Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Many business owners and residents in downtown Indianapolis are voicing concerns about the city's homeless problem. Now at 530, we're working for you, finding out how the city plans to address these concerns. And the coronavirus showing little signs of slowing down across the country and here in Indianapolis. This morning, a closer look at when we can expect to see results from the recent efforts to slow the spread of the virus. And it is 5.30 here on your Tuesday morning. We want to thank you for starting your day with us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. My pals Todd Clausen and Rafael Sanchez both at home today. Rafael, thanks for joining us from down in Franklin. Good morning to you and Paul, uh, I was going to call him Paul. I don't know why I was going to call him Paul, but Todd. <laughs> Todd. Uh, it's because you don't, have, you don't have a tie on today. But Todd, <laughs> if you step outside today, you have still yet to feel the change. It's still kind of muggy out there. Todd. Yeah, you, you, you know, I, I answer to most things, Raphael, so that's uh, that's okay. Just certain certain things I, I don't, obviously. All right, yeah. You're exactly right, though. We are dealing with some humidity and some patchy fog here this morning, uh, but things will get a lot better as the day progresses. That is uh, the good news across the area. Uh, some visibility issues right now to the north. You notice visibility down to uh, virtually nothing in Sheridan as well as Frankfurt, about three-tenths of a mile in Lafayette. Hasn't impacted uh, the metro area quite yet. There's some high thin clouds moving through, uh, but keep in mind uh, this camera is about 800 feet off of the ground. So uh, fog is a cloud on the ground. So the visibilities haven't dropped yet in downtown Indianapolis, but it's not out of the question. Some of that fog could settle in as these skies start to clear. And that's why northern locations have seen the fog develop because their temperatures are a little bit cooler with the clearer skies. It's still in the 70s where the clouds are in place. And as Raphael mentioned, there's still some humidity out there. By about 9 o'clock, we're into the sunshine. The humidity falls this afternoon. And by the time we get to 2 and 4 o'clock, temperatures in the mid-80s. It is seasonable. It is sunny. And the humidity will be very, very low. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads. This is over on the west side at I-465 and West Washington Street. Traffic here is moving along up to speed, both northbound and southbound. No delays to slow you down. So let's take a look up in Fishers. Good morning to you. Traffic picking up here, as you can see by all the headlights 
satellites moving across your screen. Everything's traveling up to speed northbound and southbound. No crashes, no delays up here in Hamilton County to slow down your morning commute. But new from overnight, police are investigating a shooting that happened outside of a marathon gas station on Indy's northwest side. Police tell RTV6 that a man arrived at the hospital with multiple gunshot wounds in the chest and abdomen around 10 o'clock last night. That man is listed in critical condition. Police say the shooting happened outside of the gas station near Lafayette Road and Tibbs Avenue. The victim was taken to the, uh, driven to the hospital by another person and the shooter fled in a car. Police have not released any information about a suspect at this time. Right now, a closer look at the growing number of homeless people and families now calling downtown streets their home. This morning, the concerns and the plan of action. Alyssa Donovan is live this morning with all the details. Alyssa, good morning. Good morning, Raphael. Some people we spoke to about this issue say it seems more prominent right now due to the pandemic and city leaders are hearing those concerns, which is why they've announced a plan to help those people who are experiencing homelessness here in downtown Indianapolis. On Monday, city leaders announced a plan to provide housing and health services to Indianapolis residents experiencing homelessness. The city says the pandemic created a gap in services for the city's homeless residents, leading to the temporary closure of shelters like the Rubin Engagement Center, also known as the REC, where social distancing isn't possible. The city is now partnering with the REC and several organizations to use hotel rooms as an alternative for people experiencing homelessness. The plan, a relief for some business owners on the circle. Not only do we have a big homeless issue, we also have the COVID situation. And unfortunately, our homeless friends do not practice social distancing and it becomes very difficult. So when somebody comes to sit at one of our tables here and somebody's hanging over them, that becomes an issue for people feeling comfortable and safe. Homeless neighbors are not new to downtown, but a decrease in activity because of the pandemic is highlighting the number of people who have nowhere else to go but the street. And we did speak with members of the Alliance of Homeless Transformation, and they fear once the moratorium on evictions comes to an end, that this issue is going to grow substantially in our community. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. It is 535. We want to turn now to the latest on the coronavirus and its impact on the Hoosier state. This morning, state health officials confirmed more than 560 new coronavirus cases in Indiana. The latest cases bring the total number of cases to nearly 63,000. Three more Hoosiers have died from complications from the virus. That brings the total number of deaths to more than 2,700. Taking a closer look at the state's hospital data, this morning, 46% of Indiana's ICU beds are still available. At this hour, COVID patients are using 12% of the ICU beds in our state. This morning, nearly 84% of the state's ventilators are also available. And Raphael, we are now on day two of face coverings being required in all public yeah. places statewide. Marion County has shut down bars and is limiting capacity in other places. But are these measures enough to once again slow the spread of COVID-19? Lauren, people have so many question, questions on this issue. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning with what the experts are saying. Kelsey, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Lauren and Raphael. So last week when the governor put this mandate in place, he said the reason he's putting the mask up mandate out is because the positivity rate for Hoosiers is growing when it comes to the coronavirus. But will this mask up mandate work? Will it slow the spread? Well, Dr. Sean Granis with the Regents Treef Institute tells us we should know if that new mask mandate is working in the next two weeks. He also says evidence and studies continue to show that face masks and social distancing cut down on the community spread. He believes if people follow the guidelines, we can get back to some sense of normalcy quicker. I think we're hopeful that these new measures will help to slow the growth of the virus because, of course, as we all know now, and we can watch the data on a daily basis, we're seeing an increase in that test positive rate, which is concerning. 
The Regents Chief Institute has a COVID-19 dashboard where they compile data from across the state. It breaks the information down by county. That way you know exactly how the coronavirus is impacting your community. Now this executive order is in place until August 27th. So I guess in the next two weeks, we'll see if this mask up mandate is working or not. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. More changes are coming to the IndyCar schedule due to the pandemic. Three events already scheduled at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway will now become doubleheader weekends. And here are the details. The first doubleheader will be at the Mid-Ohio on Saturday and Sunday, August the 8th and August the 9th. There will be back-to-back -back races on the Oval at the Worldwide Technology Raceway near St. Louis on August 29th and the 30th. The Harvest Grand Prix at IMS in October will become a two-day event on the road course on Friday, October the 2nd and Saturday, October the 3rd. The doubleheaders replace canceled races in Portland, Oregon, and Laguna Seca. You know, it's time now to check your forecast with Todd Clausen. TK, good morning to you. And as I mentioned, when I headed outside just a few moments ago, it still felt very humid this morning. Yeah, it is still very muggy here, Raphael, but we're about to flip the script on that here shortly as we work our way throughout the morning. Not only is it muggy out there still, it's still warm, and we're also dealing with some visibility issues in areas of fog and temperatures are going to hold pretty steady at least through 9 a.m. with the clouds and fog that are in place. But then we'll start to warm as we get into the sunshine. The cold front is still working its way through the area. The drier air is starting to work its way into uh, central Indiana and where the skies have cleared already to the north that's where we're running into some visibility issues but you just got to be patient here this morning because by this afternoon it is absolutely terrific the sun will be shining the humidity will be very very low by the time we get to two four o'clock in the afternoon just remember if you are heading to the pool or doing something outdoors now with the low humidity and the sunshine, the UV index is very high here throughout the day. Today, your burn time is probably only about 15 to 20 minutes, so make sure you put that sunscreen on. Uh, but again, yeah, things will get better as the day progresses. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you so much. A plan by Senate Republicans provides nearly $1 trillion in coronavirus relief. After the break, White House Democrats say Republicans aren't ready for serious negotiations. And Lauren, what happens if you're forced to stay home with a sick child or if school shuts down because of a coronavirus outbreak? Coming up, we're taking a closer look at what rights you have in the workplace as you think about getting your child safely back to school. You're oh. watching Good Morning Indiana. All right, and Raphael, here is a look at I-65 near State Road 334, the Whitestown area. Off in a distance, you see some flashing lights, and looks like we do have a delay heading northbound at this hour towards the Whitestown exit. So keep that in mind as you're traveling to our northwest and heading into Boone County this morning. We'll continue to monitor that situation and keep you updated as we learn more. That's coming up after the break. This morning, as health officials try to contain a spike in COVID-19 cases, millions of unemployed Americans are just struggling to make ends meet. And Lauren, this is a serious issue for thousands of Hoosier families. ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports this morning. This morning, the staggering spread of the coronavirus. More than 16 million cases worldwide, but the U.S. continues to be the hardest hit. A quarter of all the cases across the globe right here in America. The death toll is climbing in Florida, over 6,000. The Sunshine State trailing only California for total confirmed positives. In those states seeing a spike, health officials urging more restrictions. So we can see what is happening in the south moving north. We do believe that there are states that do need to close their bars to decrease indoor gatherings to less than 10. There is some hope on the horizon in the race for a vaccine. Moderna, the first company in the U.S., heads into phase three for clinical trials. 30,000 Americans are expected to participate. Here's Dr. Anthony Fauci on Fox News. That makes me cautiously optimistic that we may have something here, but it's gonna take a few months to determine whether or not we do. And there's another race in Congress and against time. 30 million Americans are set to lose a key coronavirus unemployment benefit. I don't know what we're gonna do. Single mother Sherry Johnson says a cut in coronavirus unemployment benefits would financially cripple her family. Republicans are calling for another round of $1,200 stimulus checks. The American people need more help. 
but want to slash the $600 weekly payments for out-of-work Americans, while Democrats want to keep it going through to 2021. If you've lost your job through no fault on your own, Republicans say take a 30% tax cut. And Democrats unveiled their plan two months ago. Republicans just yesterday, but it could still be weeks before a deal gets done. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. We do have some encouraging news this morning. It could be one step closer to getting a vaccine. The world's largest COVID-19 vaccine study just entered phase three. Moderna and the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases developed this vaccine. The trial will take place at nearly 100 sites across the country with 30,000 volunteers participating. Volunteers will get two injections and a placebo about a month apart. Phase one and two are mostly focused on the safety of the vaccine along with how the body responds to it. Phase Phase three will focus more on how effective the vaccine is in different groups of people. So Raphael, what happens if your child gets yeah. sick and you can't go to work? Or what if your child's school has to shut down because of a COVID outbreak? Yeah. There's a lot of questions and families are struggling with this as the new school year is approaching. Uh, so Lauren, Chris Conti is taking a closer look at parents' rights in the workplace as many consider getting their children safely back to school. In the yard has been a godsend. Okay. The constant back and forth of a summer consumed with COVID. This has been a summer of popsicles. Has left Acacia Clark and her three boys stuck in a state of uncertainty. I made a decision early on that I was going to try to keep working. And, you know, it's been mostly leaving them to their own devices. This realtor and her husband are both still working. But juggling her business and the kids has proven nearly impossible. My focus, you know, for my work has been abysmal. Um, so I, you know, it, I, I haven't been able to focus. I'll get in, you know, a few minutes here, a few minutes there, but it's, it's very stressful. As empty classrooms start to fill back up, Acacia and other parents across the country are stuck, wondering what might happen if their kids catch COVID and they can't work. Chris Fuedo is an employment attorney. If kids can't go back to school, parents can't go back to work full time. In March, Congress passed the Family's First Coronavirus Response Act. It gives parents two weeks of paid sick leave if you find yourself having to quarantine. Parents also get two weeks of paid sick leave at two-thirds your regular salary if your child's school or daycare shuts down because of COVID. And it guarantees 10 weeks of leave at two-thirds your salary if you need to take care of a sick child. Those benefits will run out on December 31st. Another big problem facing parents right now, many have already exhausted all of their leave. So if you do find yourself having to ask your boss for more flexibility, the best advice is to have a plan. Come up with your, your plan and say, hey, listen, this is how I can, this is the most that I can do for my employer, or this is how I can do everything I need to do for the employer while still there be there for my family. It's more than being stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's just being in a hard place constantly and not even having a light at the end of the tunnel. And with a new school year on the horizon, Acacia Clark and parents everywhere are trying to manage whatever the pandemic throws their way. This is a new normal for years to come. I'm Chris Conti reporting. Chris, thank you so much. We have more details on this. It is key to know that under the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, it is illegal to fire someone because they need to take care of their family due to COVID-19. You can find more tips on how some of these difficult conversations can be had with your boss in the rebound section of our website here at the Indie Channel. Com. It is now time to check with your forecast with our Todd Clausen and Todd. We are all looking for a break from this humidity, and you say it is on the timeline at some point today. Yeah, yes. You yeah, you're absolutely right, Raphael. We're in the process of trying to work that more comfortable air in right now, and I think once we get to nine o'clock and beyond, that's when the weather is really going to start to improve. But as you mentioned earlier, and I just uh, poked my head out the front door and it's still very muggy out there and we have some visibility issues as you see now this camera is obviously on top of the Salesforce Tower the tallest building in Indianapolis so it's kind of up in the clouds the visibility issues in downtown are not quite as bad as this camera is indicating but as you go north of Indianapolis there is some patchy fog that has settled into Lafayette over into the Frankfurt area down towards Sheridan as you work your way into Hamilton County there uh, as you go up US 31 so just just be advised and aware that there are some uh, visibility issues out there, even though it's not too much of an issue in southern locations. And here's why. 
It's where the temperatures are in the 60s, that's where the fog is settling in because the skies have cleared and the actual temperature and the dew point temperature are close to each other. That's why that fog is in Lafayette over towards Tipton where the clouds are still in place and it's a little bit warmer. We have no visibility issues. However, the clouds are in the process of moving out as you can see on this two hour satellite radar loop. So as the skies continue to clear, it's not out of what question that visibilities will drop here in Indianapolis. It's kind of a race of visibilities dropping and the sun eventually coming up, which is right around a 630 uh, this morning, once the sun comes up over the horizon, it should be able to burn the fog off very, very quickly uh, because it's just a very thin layer of fog. So this is a cold front that's currently working its way through. Behind it, the temperatures aren't really that much colder. Uh, so it's more of a cool front or a change in wind direction than anything. Instead of those southerly winds yesterday bringing in all the heat and humidity, we're now bringing our winds out of the west-northwest, and that's a drier wind direction for us. And that's what's going to help to drop the humidity as the day goes on. And as far as the clouds, if you're seeing them this morning, they move out as well. It turns into a mostly sunny afternoon for us and really just an absolutely terrific day with the sunshine and temperatures that'll be very seasonable in the low to mid 80s. Uh, start making those outdoor plans. I have a tea time later on this afternoon uh, to go golfing. So uh, take advantage of the nice weather if uh, you can. This evening, great for grilling outdoors if you choose to do so, or maybe just finding a patio. The low humidity temperatures in the 80s through about 8 p.m. And then we'll see those temperatures fall back down into the 70s. Mid to upper 80s later on uh, this afternoon with skies that'll be mostly sunny or Wednesday rather. This is tomorrow. Uh, 86 degrees by 4 p.m. Humidity still fairly low tomorrow. That's the good news. So just because the temperature is coming up a couple degrees tomorrow doesn't necessarily mean the humidity is going to make a big jump. Once we get to Thursday, storms return. I thinking that Thursday evening into early Friday morning has the potential to be fairly wet here across the area. And then we'll keep showers and storms in the forecast Saturday and Sunday, but plenty of dry hours mixed in just a little bit cooler. Temperatures on Sunday afternoon, Lauren, may struggle to get back to near 80 degrees. All right, Todd, thank you so much. We're taking a close look at traffic for your commute. It looks like everything's traveling smoothly right here at I-65 near State Road 267 to our northwest. We were monitoring some delays, and you may be able to see just a little bit of flashing light there far in a distance. But overall, I don't think this will slow down your commute traveling northbound or southbound through Boone County on I-65. But of course, we'll keep our eyes on this spot, and we'll keep you updated throughout the morning. Raphael? A Lauren, a museum honoring the contributions of the Latino community to American history is now one step closer to reality. The House passed a bill to establish a Smithsonian National Museum of the American Latino in D.C. Representative Jose Serrano from New York first introduced that bill just last year. It gives the Smithsonian the go-ahead to survey potential sites and set up a board of trustees that will start finding donors and raising money for half the construction costs. A companion bill has bipartisan support as well in the Senate. Well, the coronavirus pandemic has canceled Lollapalooza this year, but you can still enjoy some great music. Coming up, details on the festival's plan to go virtual. It's 5.53. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Lollapalooza's in-person event may be canceled, but as they say, the show must go on. The festival unveiled Lala 2020. It's a four-night virtual music event on Monday, Raphael. Uh, so set the dates. So this will all take place between July the 30th and through August the 2nd during the original Lollapalooza festival dates. Now the show will be made up of a mixture between original live performances, conversations with guests, and a past performances from various platforms. It will feature a lineup of 150 performances from artists including Paul McCartney, Metallica, Lord, Imagine Dragons, and much more. You can watch it all on YouTube for free. That is quite the lineup, Todd Clausen, as we look at this Tuesday. What do you have going on in the weather forecast? You, you know, improvement. I think that's one word that we can focus on here in the weather department, and that's a good thing. Yesterday, 91 degrees and all that humidity with heat indexes values up near 100 for your Monday, and then those storms rolled in. We're in the process of flipping things right now here this morning still. You notice some clouds and some visibility issues out there across parts of central Indiana. Temperatures range from 64 to the north in Lafayette to 73 in Bloomington. Just be patient for the next couple hours. 
I think by 9 o'clock, the fog is gone, the sun is out, and the humidity drops throughout the day this afternoon. I think it's going to be absolutely wonderful all across the area with temperatures climbing into the 80s. As you see on your screen, the humidity comes way down throughout the day today, so it will be very comfortable as well. We'll talk more about your extended forecast and have your latest news headlines coming up at the top of the hour. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes.